for me. <laughs> I'm sure uh, people are having fun elsewhere or having one lunches. Um, thank you at least for sticking uh, sticking out with us here. Today we uh, saw a whole uh, bunch of papers about uh, uh, well, spatial aspects of, uh, uh, of cities and mostly about how to interpret these these spaces in a horizontal sense. And uh, my focus is more on stratigraphy and trying to understand the time depth of, uh, of, of the built up environment. So my, uh, this presentation and the title uh, are born from my uh, PhD research, which I published uh, in this book, Reading Rubbish, Using Object Assemblages to Reconstruct Activities, Modes of Deposition and Abandonment at the Late Bronze Age Dunu of Tal Sabiabiat in stores now. Uh, and probably in your library, I hope so at least. So uh, uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, I called it reading rubbish because that's what I did. I looked at a lot of uh, fine assemblages, mostly refuse, uh, and tried to understand uh, through these fine assemblages what kind of activities they represent. So the first two themes, the uh, activities, the reconstruction of these, and the most deposition are interlinked, of course, and those will be the most important uh, today. Um, the context uh, I'm speaking of is the, uh, the formative stages of the Assyrian Empire in, the, uh, in Mesopotamia. This started as the early Assyrian Empire, this little orange blob around the city of Ashur. Uh, and around 1300 BC, uh, the Assyrians decided to uh, invade their western uh, neighbors, the lands of Khanikhalbat, and they took over all these lands. This is what we call the Middle Assyrian Empire mostly based on the historical narrative, these, uh, uh, these, these terms, these phases. Um, so this is where we find ourselves, in the western periphery of the empire, uh, definitely the, the wild west of this, uh, of this area, uh, where we excavated uh, a settlement, which we call a dunu, uh, called Tel Sabiabit. I'll explain a little bit about the site. It's a, uh, quite a typical Tel site with very deep stratigraphy, beautiful preservation of uh, uh, architecture, walls sometimes up to three meters in height, still uh, still preserved, and even door frames and such in these mud brick uh, uh, buildings still uh, still in place. Um, floors completely littered with objects, which gives the idea of sort of a Pompeii-like uh, uh, context where everything was left behind in great haste during some crazy. Uh, catastrophe. Um, this is uh, the ground plan of what is uh, called the level 5 settlement. So there are multiple phases, very distinct phases that are recognized by the excavators and by the uh, philologists who are looking at the cuneiform tablets that were found at the site. So they constructed uh, a periodization of this, uh, of this settlement based on the, on the tablets and the information therein and on the most obvious architectural changes in this uh, in the settlement. Uh, just to give you an idea, th this, this settlement was uh, established here by the Assyrian Empire, by the military who took over this area uh, to impose their, uh, uh, their law and their, their power over the, over the people in this peripheral, uh, peripheral lands, these newly conquered territories. Um, it's called a Dunu, which is a, a type of settlement which, uh, which is part of this military campaign uh, trying to uh, make sure that agriculture is still being uh, performed. People are uh, producing surplus for the empire and they're being controlled from these uh, settlements. So uh, this is how people are always uh, thinking about these types of settlements. And, this is kind of in, in this line we should see the earlier interpretations of, uh, of, the, of the site. So, uh, oh wait, I have a uh, laser thingy. Uh, I've broken the laser thingy. There you go. Uh, a thick, high wall, about seven meters uh, high, really gives an idea of this defensive uh, uh, function. Uh, inside we see this. Uh, structure which is called a tower because of its incredibly thick walls, it's meters uh, thick, and next to it um, a structure which was called a palace because of its typical tripartite uh, shape. And there are two toilets, uh, one here and one here, uh, that indicate that this is some sort of residential structure. Uh, and thirdly, an important structure is this here, which is a 
uh, was interpreted as an office because of the large number of cuneiform tablets that were found in this space. So here you have it, the original interpretation of this site. And we try to uh, uh, get a new perspective on what was happening here. So this is mostly based on a uh, historical narrative, the cuneiform tablets which are found at the site, but also just the general history of the Assyrian Empire. And what is represented here are the three pillars of this empire according to uh, the historians, which is the military, the tower, uh, the royals, which is, uh, and, uh, which is uh, shown by the palace, and then the administrative function, which is uh, 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 shown by uh, the presence of this office. So I try to give a more, uh, to try to um, investigate this, this site and this single phase, which was considered to have lasted about maybe 50 years, uh, to see if there was not something else going on. Like how do you interpret these spaces? How do you get to a better understanding of, of what actually happened in, these, uh, in all these rooms and all these, uh, in all these buildings, rather than just assigning a simple, uh, a single function? So uh, we focus on the office. Here's a drawing made by our philologist. Uh, we looked at all the tablets and it was quick to interpret the function of many of these uh, spaces, uh, amongst which here the, what, we, what he calls the office of Tamitta. Um, 135 cuneiform tablet fragments were found in this space. And he is always, uh, he's, he's a great speaker and he's a, uh, he's a, he has a very vivid imagination apparently and he always explained to us that what happened in this space was at some crazy catastrophe uh, they had a wooden box full of tablets and as they needed to flee uh, the settlement they tripped over the box, it fell over and all these objects were strong over the, over the floor of this, uh, of this office and they were clearly an in situ find according to him. So I tried to uh, in investigate this uh, critically and see what was going on and found out that there's something else going on. So this is the same space and all these dots are the um, uh, individual tablet fragments which are found uh, uh, inside. And as you can see, they have a very wide distribution, both horizontally as well as vertically. In red, um, these dots represent fragments of a tablet which could be uh, refitted after the excavation. And you can see that their spatial distribution uh, does not comply with this idea of an in situ, uh, uh, in situ catastrophe deposit. Um, it's shown that uh, actually these, these objects were deposited here as a secondary refuge deposit. So not in situ, but really as, uh, as a refuge. So this um, shows that even though this area may have been used as an office, uh, it's a, the layout of the, of the architecture does seem to indicate something like, uh, like that, this tablet uh, uh, deposit is not necessarily related to that. Um, there is no direct uh, necessary causal relationship between them. And also looking critically at uh, what else can be found in these spaces is um, in the corner of, uh, of this room, this is one of the rooms of this, uh, of this office, um, before this tablet rich deposit ended up on the floor, there was a hole dug through it and a jar was interred uh, together with the cremated remains of two individuals and uh, lots of uh, beautiful burial roots. So, in fact, the space uh, uh, was first used perhaps as an apartment or an office, um, and then first as a burial location, and only then were these tablets deposited on top. Um, so clearly there is some more complexity to, this, uh, to, the, to the history of this uh, space than is, uh, uh, than is shown by, uh, by just this, this, uh, this simple narrative. After the deposit of these tablets, there was uh, some architectural modification. There was a, uh, a small wall built up in between, and a part of the area was used as a pottery workshop. So, uh, from a clean space, uh, especially since there was a small bathroom uh, uh, there, it is turned into this uh, very dirty, uh, dirty space. Trying to understand the complexity of, uh, of these things in a, in a large settlement like that, I uh, created these, uh, these graphs, these schematics, which are called a, a sequence of events, which describe all the different events which can be reconstructed using archaeological evidence uh, uh, from the site. So within this one phase, uh, level 5 uh, of the settlement, 
and we can reconstruct all these different uh, individual uh, events. And just to clarify it a little, uh, the main ones that I just mentioned is that um, the architecture seems to indicate that it was used as uh, an apartment or an office in the beginning. Later, the uh, uh, place was used for uh, as a burial location. Only then were these tablets uh, deposited, architectural modification, and then even used as a pottery workshop. So this was a, a quite a simple uh, example of how this is uh, how this is used. Uh, for a larger area with a couple of rooms connected to each other, we can create uh, schematics like this, uh, which show us that within one phase, which is a relatively short-lived phase uh, uh, as assumed, um, there, are, there is a multitude of uh, events which can be uh, reconstructed. Interestingly, um, you'll see the pattern that on the left side, the beginning of this, uh, the biography of this space, all the events are mostly indicated by uh, the features. So the built features such as hearths or benches, and things, which are indicated by these uh, connected uh, boxes, the, the green boxes. In blue are all the deposits which contain finds, uh, which, uh, uh, which I try to use to reconstruct these activities. Um, but these mostly indicate uh, uh, events which took place in the later half, and particularly the end of use of this, uh, of this space. So, uh, this, uh, uh, these finds, which are, which are uh, often used to, to really uh, give an idea of the most important or main function of a space, in fact, mostly indicate what has been, uh, been done in, the, in, this, in this last uh, bit of, of use. So what I did was try to use these uh, schematics, try to create these, and combine them with work in uh, 3D uh, GIS. We digitized all the uh, all the features Come on, play. Uh, by just digitizing them. Uh, this is all based on legacy data, so so we only had to work with the paper data that, uh, that was left from the site. Um, so these. Uh, features are digitized in quite a simple manner. Uh, we just digitized them in 2D and then uh, gave them the minimum elevation and extruded to their maximum elevation and plotted all the 3D coordinates of the finds in there. To get a better understanding of the relationship between these uh, features, the, 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 the build features and the finds, uh, we created uh, 3D convex hulls. Here you go. Uh, automatically, which completely uh, envelope uh, a group of finds uh, as they are uh, considered to be deposited in, uh, in one go. Uh, as you can see, these uh, yield a, a better view of, of, the, of the relationship between them and especially if we combine them with these uh, features. So the, the point here is to reconstruct as many archaeological features and, and, and find groups uh, uh, as we can to use this as a tool for analysis, to, be, uh, uh, to make it easier for us to, to see these uh, uh, relationships between, between these uh, in 3D. It is a combination of these two uh, approaches, the 3D visualization of all the objects as they were found, together with the architecture and, and built features, um, and this sequence of events which enable uh, the, the understanding of very complex biographies which, uh, uh, which change uh, uh, as soon as you jump one space in this, uh, uh, in this doodle. So, I hope uh, uh, you understand that this helps us to, to get a, a more nuanced and more uh, view of this, uh, of this settlement. For this office, we can say that within this single phase, um, it is not just an office, but it's been used as a burial location, uh, it's been used for the discard of all these, all these tablets. It's been a storage space, a pottery workshop. There's even evidence for a kitchen. So there is way more complexity to this story than a simple main function would indicate. As we were analyzing the uh, palatial structure and this, and this tower, found out that actually this, this sort of monumental uh, uh, state of the palace was only, was only there for a very short period and afterwards was inhabited by people who never kept the place clean at all. So, uh, and this tower uh, uh, was apparently 
uh, not as high as we thought it was uh, through some calculations and managed to find out that all the activities within had to do with grain storage and uh, redistribution. So uh, a more detailed and critical view of the different events which have taken place, all the single activities which we can reconstruct, uh, help to uh, give a more complex uh, view of this, uh, uh, of this uh, settlement, as well as a more nuanced view of its main function and use, uh, particularly to local society. Um, and with that, I'd like to thank my uh, EOC project uh, uh, supervisor, uh, who gave me a salary, that was very nice, and uh, Peter Arkenholz, who was here from Montaigne and Hanna, especially for inviting me here, for your patience.